Hey everyone, and welcome back to Top Investor. We all have big plans when it comes to saving money. We assure ourselves we'll start saving once we reach a particular age, for instance, when we hit a specific period or get a pay rise. But in fact, you'll only start saving money when you form steady money habits and your future needs become more important than your current wants. Today, we're gonna to be talking about top 10 money saving tips. Make sure you stay until number one as you don't wanna miss this unique topic, top 10 money saving tips. Number 10, reduce your energy costs. Do you know that you can lessen your electricity bill by making a few tweaks to your home? Tweaks like repairing broken pipes, washing clothes in cold water, installing dimmer switches, and balancing electricity use by using appliances strategically. While buying a new, less consuming energy appliance is a great way to save money on your electric bill, they're costly. If you can't fix this into your monthly budget, you can pay for it in installments without really hampering your monthly income and saving you a lot on your energy bill. Being less reliant on energy companies can only be good because energy prices are unpredictable and can increase any time. Because you have no control over this, it's essential to keep your energy bills checked by reducing the amount of gas and electricity you use. Number nine, spend unforeseen or extra earnings prudently. Probably you get an upgraded work bonus, an inheritance or tax refund, make use of them judiciously. And when we say judiciously, we are not talking about just placing it in the bank. If you've still got loans and debts you are paying off, it will be advisable to use those funds to pay off your study loans or the excess on your credit card instead of keeping that money away. If you're debt free, you can save those additional dollars to build up your contingency fund in case of unforeseen circumstances. If you regularly receive funds on your tax, tax refund, this is the best time to adjust holding onto your paycheck so that you can bring home more money each month. Number eight, cancel all standing orders and automated subscriptions. There is a high probability you are paying for recurring dues like Apple TV+, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, Amazon Prime Video, and Hotstar. If you're spending on something you don't need or have neglected, stop! There are three types of payments and it's plausible all these could be leaving your coffers and many you may not even know. Many payments are either quarterly, biannual, or yearly, so check to ensure to you cover all your outgoings. The first step is to discontinue any subscriptions you don't use on the regular and make sure that you deactivate the auto renew option whenever you make your subscribe. Always check you're permitted to cancel before doing so. If you're in a contract, cancelling could be a breach, leaving you with a penalty fee. You can also consider sharing your subscription with your friends and families. This can help reduce the total cost you are meant to pay if you were to subscribe alone. The majority of streaming platforms like Netflix and Hulu allows you to stream and watch your favourite movies and shows on more than one screen and in full HD. This way, everyone wins and saves. Number seven, inquire about discounts and always paying cash. You never know if a grocery store offers a discount until you ask, and you should always ask. Anytime you're going to a mall, cinema, or any sporting event, ensure you check to see if they are any special discounts for any category of people, either senior, students, teachers, young kids, or anything else. If not, never underrate the negotiating power of cash. Opting to pay in cash has numerous benefits, like some card issuers charge companies a small fee for processing transactions. Some companies pass a charge on to customers in the form of an extra cost. Others, especially in states where such overcharges aren't allowed, offer cash payment discounts. Cash discounts are typical at gas stations in certain areas where you'll usually save 10 to 20 cents a gallon if you pay cash rather than a card. Number six, reduce expenses on groceries consumption. After taking an inventory of the month's budget, majority of Americans are surprised to find out the amount they're spending on groceries every month. If you're like the usual American, you'd probably be spending around $647 on just groceries. It can be relaxing and comfortable to walk up to Walmart, grab a soda, milk, some few bags of chips, and top it off at the receptionist's desk with some salty snacks. Small purchases as these, if turned into a habit, can add up quite a bit and end up blowing the budget. You can also save money on groceries by preparing your meals weekly and taking an inventory of what's in your closet before you hit the supermarket. There is little or no sense in racking and buying up what you already have. Look out for coupons, and if the store has discounts or compensations, make use of them. Look out for popular deals of the day or week. Also, when you go grocery shopping, adhere to your list. Before leaving your house, make a list of what you have in stock to avoid buying what you already have at home. Also, you can try out the new grocery pickup offers that stores offer. This option saves you money if you desire to save up. 
Most major stores provide it sometimes for free. This is helpful because pulling up your groceries reduces any attractions you would have had once you perceive the scent of those freshly baked bread and cheese transmitting throughout the store. Number five, lower your cell phone bill. Cell phones are not only a notably valuable extension of your brain, but also of your wallet, with expensive cell phone plans making a significant line item in your budget. If your monthly phone bill struggles with your monthly grocery allowance, it's time to discover ways to reduce it. You can save money by using Wi-Fi as often as possible, considering family share plans, looking to prepaid plans, taking advantage of your employee discount, cutting your insurance, steering clear of doing a payment plan for your phone, and limiting your background app or buying no contract phones. If you have a more moderate cell phone bill and it becomes a little part of your budget, you'll have more money to hit your goals each month, whether throwing more at your debt or saving up for your future. Number four, sell everything you don't need. It's prudent to discard items in your home that you don't use or belongings that you're ready to let go of the interest for your financial future. That vintage wristwatch your uncle gave you? Trade it. That diamond necklace you found at an antique shop? Sell it. You'd be astonished at how much irrelevancies you never thought of or never used in your home. Trading off these irrelevancies can be the difference between living paycheck to paycheck and having a fully funded emergency fund. Thanks to the internet, there are now numerous avenues to selling your stuff. You can sell them on eBay, your local area Facebook group, Craigslist, or Facebook Marketplace. With all of these options to sell on, you don't have to worry about people not desiring your stuff. So if you are trying to pay off some debt, grow an emergency fund, this is an excellent way to do so. Also, selling what you don't need can make your home more organized, clutter free, and smells fresh. Number three, encourage the habit of eating at home. According to the recent research by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, a typical family spends about $3,365 on food outside of their home each year, accounting to about $280 a month. Purchasing lunch several times a week may seem harmless, mainly if your chosen restaurant is just some walking block away from your office. You can save a significant amount of money if you imbibe the culture of preparing and packing your meals along with you to work or having your meals at home. Also, cooking at home is a best choice for having a consistently healthy, budget-friendly diet. Restaurants and eateries often include more fats, sugars, and sodium than you would want to do when you use cooking. Cooking at home gives you the luxury adding only as much as you think you should, while also giving you the healthiest sugar and fat alternatives. You can also often buy a week's worth of markets for about the same price as two dinner or lunch meals. Fix your food at home and observe your savings stack up week by week. We're sure most young folks are one way or another a victim of this. <laughs> Please start cooking at home, of course. This is a way of spending less money. Number two, save money automatically. Every bank can set up automatic transfers. You can set up your bank to automatically move funds from your checking account into a saving account every month. This is the most natural thing you can do when you're learning how to save money. As you budget, you'll be able to discover how much you can put away each month. Automatic savings works because you don't have to think about how much you need to save. It can also help you achieve several financial objectives, including saving for a down payment on a home, saving for your children's education, creating an emergency fund, and saving for retirement. Most automatic savings accounts are secured or have a penalty for a quick withdrawal, so your money accumulates in a dedicated account that can't be spent. Pushing yourself to save automatically is the best way to save. After all, you can't spend what you don't have. As your salary rises, so should your savings. If you secure a new job and earn $200 more each week, consider saving at least 10% of that or an additional $20 a week. Number one, reduce your vacations. Try and stay away from the flash airfare deals. A lot of people get taken up in that idea that I'm getting this $900 plane ticket for 300 bucks, so I'm saving $600, but you're still paying $300 that you may not have. If your ambition is to rack up some money, a vacation is the most critical thing you should spend your money on. Instead of taking your family off to the Bahamas or the Caribbean, try exploring your city. This saves a lot of money traveling to another country when you could explore and have fun in your own neighborhood. Your vacation spending should be budgeted into your non-monthly expenses. If your vacation takes a considerable part of your budget, set up a separate account where you can save and have a little portion of your paycheck deposited into it directly. While you are here, go ahead and click one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.